Thanks, thanks, Tony. Um, <clears throat> yeah, thanks for the allowing me to come talk to you all. Um, as Tony said, I see um, skin cancers as well as um, uh, head and neck cancers and um, phase one consults at Angeles Clinic. We're part of Cedar Sinai, and so that's our clinic down in the uh, right uh, left hand corner. And um, we admit patients to the Beverly Hills campus as well. Um, my contact information is right there. It's also at the last slide too, if, you, if anybody needs anything. Um, quick disclosures. Um, here's the outline of what we're going to talk about today. So first, a uh, brief overview of some of the um, uh, approved combinations and the uh, recent um, adjuvant and new adjuvant studies. And then um, at the second half, we'll talk about the, the fun stuff, the stuff that I like, the, uh, the novel therapies, some TIL, and then some experimental um, studies that we have going on um, at Angelus Clinic. Um, so this is probably not new to most people, but um, Checkmate 067 was the landmark study combination Nevo and IPI um, versus monotherapy of Nevo and versus monotherapy of IPI um, in a one-to-one -one ratio of 300 patients roughly in each um, cohort. And um, the median PFS you know, was 6.9 months, OS 11.5 months, um, and then the complete response rate was um, you know, at around 10% for both the combination arm. And so this study was what led us to change the paradigm for um, dual checkpoint inhibition for metastatic melanoma as a first-line therapy. Um, and now, um, there's seven and a half year follow-up was published a couple, uh, or last year. And um, the OS at seven and a half years um, for the combination is about 50%. So you know we're, st we're curing a large percentage of these people, or putting them in long-term remissions at least, um, with the combination therapy. Um, the 10-year follow-up, which is just amazing, is going to probably be published later this year or next year, so um, that'll be exciting to see. But you know, being able to say that we can cure half of people with metastatic melanoma is pretty awesome. Um, and then you know, uh, this next led to, you know, what about uh, patients who have brain metastasis? And so Checkmate 204 um, was a phase two study that showed that there's efficacy uh, of dual checkpoint inhibition in the CNS. And so the rate of intracranial clinical burn fit was 57%, complete response rate 33%. Um, and so this is using the high dose IPI, the IPI 3 mg per kg plus NEVO um, times four, and then the NEVO maintenance. And so um, the, the longer term follow up with this has also been shown that 36 months was 71.9% 71, 71 uh, in the asymptomatic cohort, but only 19% in the symptomatic cohort. So when we find this, just shows the, benefit, or the, the importance of doing those. Um, staging brain MRIs when people are initially diagnosed with metastatic melanoma because if they have asymptomatic METs, treating them very aggressively with the uh, high dose AP can really get them um, it, it into a, good, a better place. Um, this is one of the trials I always like to point out because it's not maybe not as well known. Um, this is SWOG 1616. And so this gave Nevo and IPI with IPI at the three mg per kg dose um, to patients who had already progressed on PD-1. So this is where we would use for the patients who had adjuvant checkpoint um, in their stage two or three melanomas after surgery, and you know they progressed eventually. So what do we do? Um, it's, it's a question we get a lot. This, this study kind of answers that. Um, it shows that you know it wasn't a huge study. It was led by our colleagues at UCLA, Dar Bartosh, I think was the first author on this. Um, High dose IPI with NEVO compared to IPI alone um, seems to have a slight benefit. So, still using the PD1 um, is probably useful. The PFS was 34% at six months versus 13% for IPI alone. Um, the OS, not statistically significant, but um, maybe have a trend towards a difference. Um, this is also the, um, the forest plot showing that pretty much all groups benefited from the combination instead of just the IPI alone. Um, and so then moving on to adjuvant and new adjuvant combinations, and I forgot to say, I always like to include um, uh, pictures I took of places that are prone to sunburns to you know, <laughs> uh, make everybody aware that we need to put our sunscreen on. So Catalina Island, definitely a place I've gotten a sunburn before. Um, uh, yeah. Um, so here's the adjuvant data that I think we're all, we, hopefully anybody who treats melanoma is aware of, um, for stage three or four. Um, adjuvant NEVO um, became a uh, standard of care um, after surgery um, when compared to APU was superior in PFS, or recurrence-free survival, I should say. Um, and then adjuvant PIMBRO versus placebo um, was superior for recurrence-free survival as well. One of the interesting things I always like to point out is it technically hasn't shown an overall survival benefit yet. 
Um, we actually did a study that's uh, published in ESMO, ESMO Open last month, and you know we do see it in database a improved overall survival, but technically it's not an overall survival yet, which is always just an interesting point. And so this led to, you know, we know adjuvant works. What about new adjuvant? Can we give this immunotherapy before surgery to, you know, evaluate the response and then also improve outcomes? And so this was the Prado study. Um, so it's not just a museum in Madrid. Um, it's a great museum, though. Um, so you use three, there's th they use Nevo and Ipi. Nevo at the three meg per kg and the Ipi at one meg per kg for two cycles. Um, and then they underwent lymph node dissection and, and surgery. And then if they had a major path response to the green box, um, then they, uh, they had no further therapy. If they had a partial response, so 10 to 50% of a viable tumor was still left, then they went, uh, underwent therapeutic lymph node dissection. And this study was primarily done in Europe. So that's kind of a difference in the standard of care there. And then also if there was a pathologic non-response, that's what that PNR means, then they would do the lymph node dissection and undergo um, adjuvant NEVO, um, continued or BRAF uh, targeted therapy for patients as well. And so what do, what do we see? So the green line is the people who had the major pathologic response, almost no recurrences um, following surgery if you had a major pathologic response. So those people do really well. But however, the partial response and the non-response, they look about the same, and why is that? Because those people that had a partial response had no further adjuvant therapy, we think that maybe that's part of the reason why that they don't have much of a difference compared to the non-responders. And so this trial led to a phase three trial in the DINA, and they changed some of the characteristics of that. And so we're agentially waiting what they needed Nadina is gonna show to see if the Nevo and Ipi is a good um, new adjuvant combination. Um, but what has been um, shown was in SWOG 1801. This, uh, show, uh, this was given a lecture by uh, Sapna Patel from Anderson um, in the SWOG group where they use new adjuvant Keytruda followed by adjuvant Keytruda versus adjuvant pembrolizumab alone. And so the groups were pretty evenly split, primarily stage 3B and C. This is the version 8 where we have a 3D group as well, not very many 4s or 3Ds, which are very bad prognosis groups. And so you can see that the, the, the response data of the patients um, here on the, the right-hand side. Um, and what was the event-free survival at two years? So this is a pretty great Kaplan-Meier curve, 72% at two years versus 49% in the adjuvant-only group. So over 20% increase in recurrence-free survival if you got new adjuvant therapy. So grade three or higher um, side effects, immune-related IREs were about the same, 12 versus 14%, so essentially the same. Um, this is uh, no group, um, every group, I should say, benefited from the new adjuvant adjuvant therapy better than just the adjuvant therapy alone. So this really has, oh, sorry. So this really has changed um, the paradigm all of our patients with stage three melanoma were giving new adjuvant therapy too, whether it's Keytruda or Nevo Ipi, whichever one. Um, you know, all of our patients, as long as they can tolerate it, we're giving ad new adjuvant therapy too. Um, moving on, so this this is one of the topics that was um, pretty widely spread in the press recently. This mRNA vaccine, so using the same um, vaccine. Um, uh, me uh, mechanism that was used for COVID, designing a personalized mRNA vaccine through Moderna. So patients would have their tissue sample, they would sequence it, find uh, antigens, they would do, um, uh, they would make a personalized vaccine for each patient, then it was manufacturing. Side effects were seen, including more fatigue, chills, um, injection site erythema, myalgias, and flu-like illnesses. Um, it'll be very interesting to see once the randomized trial comes out because, recall, this was open label. And so here's the data. So uh, the recurrence-free survival was um, improved um, by hazard ratio of 0.561 for the mRNA 4157 plus Pimbro versus Pimbro alone. And this is the Kaplan-Meier for distant metastasis-free survival. Um, that was improved as well, has a ratio of 0.347, sent 92% versus 77%. So a big difference for um, adjuvant um, combination vaccine therapy. Um, there's going to be a phase three trial um, that will open up at, at least with us, um, and you know, I'll be the site PI for this trial as well here shortly. Um, moving on to one of my 
Um, next favorite thing is adoptive cell therapy. Glacier National Park, great place. Don't forget your sunscreen there either. Um, so tumor infiltrating lymphocytes. Um, this is the landmark paper presented by Hannon and Group, the Dutch, the Dutch group, um, where they used tumor infiltrating lymphocytes in PD-1 refractory melanomas. So if, um, tills, um, uh, how, how do we give tills? So it requires a tumor harvest. Then these um, cells are processed for initial growth, and they have um, ex an expansion protocol where they're expanded. Um, and then they're processed um, for patients, and they get a myeloblative, uh, sorry, non myeloblative lymphodepleting treatment prior to till therapy, and then they get the till therapy. Um, this, in this trial, it was a one to one randomization. They compared IPI, 3 mg per kg, versus till treatment. And so the hazard ratio was positive on this one, 0 0.50. Um, include, uh, PFS was superior. Um, with you know the p-value of less than 0 0.01, and as with all these immunotherapy trials, there's that long tail. So that's the thing that really differentiates immunotherapy from other therapies. Is there's patients who are likely getting cures, seen in that long tail on these Kaplan-Meier curves. Um, here's the waterfall plot um, showing the response rate was um, complete response rate was 20% for till and 7% for checkpoint, um, with an overall sorry objective response rate of 41% versus 18%. Um, in favor of the TIL group. Um, this led to the IOVANS product. So this IOVANS product has made the news recently. Um, TOGV was approved, I think, two weeks ago. Um, Lifalusol um, for TIL therapy in the US. And this is based on this um, study uh, with two pooled cohorts, um, over objective response rate about 30% in, um, in this study. Um, here's a uh, waterfall plot showing the exact same thing, and here's the you know the big thing again. Those tails are what where kind of the um, the meat lies. So median overall survival was 13.8 months. Median PFS is 4.1 months. Um, however, with the many refractory IO trials, again that duration of response is the most important thing, and it's not yet reached at 28 months follow up on um, the most recent publication. Um, Angels Clinic and Cedars were going to be one of the um, uh, sites of excellence for the IOVANCE product, so we're starting to um, get patients um, the standard of care with this TIL therapy. Um, what's next for TILs? Um, so this is the, where the talk turns into the things I'm most excited about. So adding checkpoint, so that's another big effort, adding checkpoint to TILs. This is one trial pr pr uh, presented at SITC where they gave Keytruda plus TIL in the first line therapy. Uh, there's some caveats to that, obviously. Um, and then here's another drug that, or another product, I should say, that we'll be getting. I'll be the site PI at Angels Clinic as well. This is um, Obsidian product. It's what they do instead of using that IL-2, um, high dose IL-2, which is infused after the TIL product infusion. It's including a TIL, um, or sorry, it's including IL-15 in the product itself. And so um, with the acetazolamide it's given, um, you know, common medication that we give, um, we can activate the IL-15 after the product's infused. So this is really interesting. We're not going to have to give the higher dose IL-2. Probably we'll still be, need to have close monitoring in the ICU, et cetera, but you know, we just give acetazolamide instead of these you know, in, extra uh, injections. Um, so this is a really cool product. Um, and this is just the basic science status showing that uh, the unengineered till seems to have less persistence in vivo following the injection versus the till with the cetazolamide and the engineered IL-15. And here's the PDX model showing that same data. And so novel therapeutics under investigation, you know, what's going to make the next big splash? Um, it could be this whale that in Maui, um, or it could be one of these drugs. Um, <clears throat> so. Another interesting thing is anti-CTLA-4, we know, is very effective in melanoma. Um, however, the side effects present, prevent using it at high doses. We know that ipilimumab has a dose-dependent effect. Some of those first trials showed that 3 mg per kg um, were less effective than the 10 mg per kg dose, but it was so toxic. Everybody um, had colitis, they had pneumonitis, all these other side effects. But what if we can get this more targeted therapy into the tumor microenvironment. So this is what this CAB, this conditionally active biologic therapy does. It's a uh, BioAtlas 3071. It's an ipilimumab um, uh, drug that gets into the tumor microenvironment. That tumor microenvironment is acidic. 
the acidic changes, uh, act activates this, the drug essentially and um, it produces the effect. Here's another infographic showing that. And so we have this trial, um, my colleague Dr. Memi, who sees melanoma patients um, and, and, and other non-melanoma skin cancers as well, he's the PI for this one. And you know, we're going at doses, uh, you know, they started small doses, but um, they're going up to doses of 350, which is equivalent to like about five mg per keg, and then up to 700, which is equivalent to 10 mg per keg. And so, so far they've presented some of the initial safety data, and these numbers are looking far better than the 10 mg per keg um, ipilimumab doses. So you're getting up to 700 mg per keg, which was remember, equivalent to the 10 mg per keg, and we're not having near the significant side effects. You're still having that AST, ALKFOS, diarrhea, all those same um, side effects you would see, um, but uh, you know, at a much lower rate, which is exciting. So we'll see how this drug turns out. Um, And so, so far, the response data that's presented so far, a couple of responses and, you know, cervical cancer and um, GE cancer. It's going to be in combination and uh, monotherapy. Um, here's a new, new kind of drug um, uh, platform by molecular templates. Um, let me actually show this picture. This picture is better. I call this like a bio ADC. Essentially, it's a it's a you know it's an antibody attached to a payload, and, but instead of a cytotoxic chemotherapy, the toxin body is a sugar-like toxin. So the sugar-like toxin um, um, gets uh, gets introduced into the cell and um, is uh, causes um, uh, destruction cell kill in cells with CTLA-4 expression. And so this is a really cool thing. It's not the chemotherapy. It has a sugar-like toxin that's getting involved. And what's, what's, what's the potential benefit? So targeted removal, shorter half-lives in these ADCs, intracellular mechanism as, action, um, and then it's self-internalizing. They can internalize even the non-internalizing receptor. So this is a very, very cool drug. Um, we uh, actually, I enrolled the first patient on this first in human study, so that was really cool. Um, and we'll hopefully have some data later this year. Um, the, the next study that I would talk about, uh, my colleague Dr. Winsel um, has this uh, kind of cool platform as well. So GV20 is a, a new drug company that has this database. They are using AI to predict what antibodies um, to use and what targets to, to, to um, direct th to. And so they've um, designed several drugs. And the lead product is this novel checkpoint um, shown here um, that 65 to 90 percent of tumors you know, have antigen presentation defects. And these tumors are often immune cold and don't respond to immunotherapy. Antigen presentation loss is a major mechanism of acquired resistance. And so you know, what about using NK cells? And so this insulin, IGSF8, is a novel innate immune checkpoint and promising therapeutic target, um, kind of uh, going bypassing that immune, uh, those patients who don't respond to immunotherapy. And so we're enrolling patients to this, very exciting. IGSF8 is produced, er, expressed on many tumors. Melanoma um, is the highest. So this will be interesting um, data once it's presented. This is the first in human study. Um, on the phase one and two part of it. And then lastly, I'll show this um, immune, immune bispecific for melanoma. So um, Dr. Omid um, presented this at ESMO last year, the year before, um, versus PRAIM of CD3. Uh, so PRAIM is highly expressed in melanoma. You might start seeing this on pathologic slides that they're testing for PRAIM now um, for melanoma. Uh, and so where this drug is bispecific for PRAIM and CD3. And we've seen so far, you know, good responses in the initial studies. They're going to expand this to phase two. Um, I think is already underway. So this is last exciting things. So many exciting things going on in melanoma. Um, here's the contact information if anybody has questions. Um, you know, we see lots of melanoma, cutaneous squamous, basal, Merkel cell, et cetera. Um, email, Twitter there. And then lastly, here's kind of my um, algorithm of how I think about of metastatic melanoma and just, just for kind of uh, fun. Um, so, you know, I think of if they have visceral crisis or brain mets, we think about BRAF and MEC followed by checkpoint. If they're adjuvant or if, they're, if they had prior adjuvant or brain mets, 
again, dual checkpoint. Um, if they had good performance status, dual checkpoint. Less good performance status, single agent PD-1. Can think about relativity study with Arella and Evo. And if they have progressive disease, then we consider that SWOG 1616 I showed. And then I newly had to add, add this last week, the TIL therapy we can now consider. Um, and then progressive disease, if they're BRAF positive, we think about BRAF MEK inhibitors. And then we always are thinking about clinical trials, especially at our clinic. Okay, great. Thank you for your time.